Morning, Regina. Uh, there, I can hear you. I was just listening to Tuck and Patty. Do you know Tuck and Patty? I know, I know the name, but I'm not familiar with them. They sing beautiful Beatles songs. Oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> Very beautiful. How are you this morning? Okay, just, you know, uh, reading in bed and now I'm going to be, you know, it's shopping day, but also, uh, you know, I'm starting to do a lot of kind of background paperwork for the station. I'm, I'm creating a, a, what they call a succession plan. Um, Very good. Very good. Every position and everything technical, like what happens if this breaks? How do you, and trying to set it all up so that instead of, at least on the radio side, instead of everything being based on uh, single people in positions, that it be committees uh, with at least three people share in everybody sharing knowledge as we all become uh, you know, w with a lot of transparency. I'm getting a lot of pushback from the Grand Street Board, but, uh, um, you know, I'm just continuing ahead. It's called Community Arts. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And the whole idea of Community. <laughs> exactly. You know, and, and transparency is the key there. Um, how are you doing in terms of, uh, uh, shows at this the, the senior show well now my title is going to be sassy seniors how's that very good <laughs> I like that sassy seniors and um, Lisa Calendarino am I saying her name right Calendarino uh, Liz Calendrino Liz Candino Liz Beth has agreed to Interview, you, right? Take, interview my first show and we'll do it probably via Zoom. I think Zoom would pre probably be the easiest for me, yeah. I'm guessing. Uh, and, and then if you can think of a piece of music to add on to the front, like a tagline. That's why I was listening to Tuck and Patty. Okay. 
uh, I like them, but I'm also thinking, I don't know if they do, will you still need me, will you still feed me when I'm 64? You know that song. Okay. The Beatles. I'll take a look. I'll look uh, that and see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I would love them the most because they strike my heart chords, you know? Okay. Yeah, there would be like a few, uh, just uh, under a minute of it. So I'll find something and run it by you. Okay. Okay. Uh, and Lisa is, Elizabeth's going to call me on Thursday and do that and then get the. transcript to you. I'll have to learn this process, but, uh, you know, I thank her for doing it. Yeah, and, and she needs work on learning it, too, so just by doing it will go a long way. Okay, okay. And the, good morning to Tom McFeeders. I see Tom here. Uh-oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, I am. Good morning to you, Regina. Hi. Are, are you doing a show for the uh, the village thing? No, no. I don't think it, oh, it's. On. I don't think it's the village. It's. It, it will be called Sassy Seniors, and I'm going to be uh, interviewing experts in the community uh, on senior citizens' interests and in keeping us in our homes independent, vibrant, participating members of the community. Uh, I have a good person for you to interview. Uh, Who's that? I don't know if you would know Michelle. <clears throat> Sorry, Michelle Tucker. Uh, she lives in public housing on South Pearl, and she's very active in organizing seniors. Michelle Tucker. Yeah. Did she used to live in one Lincoln Square? She may have. I, I met her when she was actually at Ezra Prentice, but... Um, I'm wondering, do her sons work for Albany Housing Authority? Not that I know of. Okay. I, do, I, I may not know. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, anyway, just, uh, uh, shoot me a line and I'll be glad to connect you, right? Thank you. Just a thought is that um, between interviews, just the idea of seniors talking amongst themselves will give the show added oomph. It's like with um, all the shows, just the sound of people's voices and regular conversation goes a long way towards uh, building up the sense of community that we're building and supporting with the station. Well, the two groups that I'm in, Dancing with the Elders, with Carlos Osorio, who's living in Brooklyn right now, mm -hmm. and Kindred Spirits uh, off of, um, on First Street there, uh, Norma, Norman Chapman's building, mm -hmm. uh, th they're the longest running senior citizen group in town. Uh, those two groups. And so I want to have Carlos as one of the people and Gail Myers with, is with the statewide seniors. She's been organizing us in the kindred spirits to talk like a Zoom talk on the first Wednesdays of the month. Um, the Dancing with the Elders, we haven't gotten together yet. We still have to get together through this COVID thing, you know, uh, keep ourselves afloat. It sounds like great, great material, a lot of great material. Um, yeah. Uh, Kasim, hello there. Um, how did the thing go last weekend? Um, Black Wolf Weekend was, it, it, it got us a decent amount of press um, and some people reaching out about, you know, doing another one, that kind of stuff. Not pretty much almost nobody came down to 347 South Pro. Mm -hmm. And the people who did just drove by, um, probably because, you know, the personality of that particular street. Yeah. Um, but we did have a pop-up market at the Dama Market at the Boys and Girls Club. Um, 
for their Sunday. We didn't promote the – they did an all-weekend thing as well. Um, they did something Friday – or, no, they did something Saturday and Sunday. Um, they've been doing it for two months. It's been slow everywhere up until that Sunday where we promoted the Black Wolf Weekend um, on the news and on social media. So that was the biggest turnout that they had. Um, and then they had a, some of our vendors from the night there in attendance. And when um, do you think you'll do a follow-up one? I mean, honestly, I'd love to figure out um, something to do at Grand Creek um, around probably the Sunday before Christmas. The, the which? The Sunday, the Saturday before Christmas, sorry. Okay, that's that's coming up real fast, but do you have to Sean's uh, contact info? Uh, Murdoch? Mr. Murdoch? Yeah. Yeah, I do. I can reach out to him. Yeah, reach out to him and then let me know because maybe what we'll do, I mean, if once you set the date, this last one, it came up on me too quickly to be able to get it into the radio uh, setup. But next time, you know, if that's when you're planning it, um, I'll, uh, you know, run spots on it and then maybe we'll just uh, run, you know, I can be around the thing and record people and record it and create a, a new scene show out of it that you can then utilize to kind of build from. Okay. Um, hopefully that'll help. Um, Tom, by the way, we're starting um, on Monday with uh, these hourly every other hour updates on where the COVID numbers are and then that'll gradually uh, morph into information on uh, vaccines. Um, and that'll, uh, we've got, I've got this woman, um, uh, Rachel Wilson, who's just gangbusters and will probably end up taking over new scene at some point who has been creating these, she's been uh, listening to all the Dan McCoy's broadcasts, the governor's, that seems to be the two key one uh, with Catherine Whalen being kind of the best voice in there. And then, uh, so she kind of updates on where things stand with a little bit of audio. It's a minute, under a minute and a half. I've got it set in there so that We'll have what happened, like the first one Monday morning will be from yesterday, and then by Monday afternoon we'll have an update running that'll run into Tuesday morning, and then we'll replace it by Tuesday afternoon. And we're just going to continue that way through the future so that, and then um, as we're going, we'll have more and more community voices, including kids, in mm -hmm. that little minute broadcast so that it achieves that idea of finding trustworthy voices in the neighborhood to pass mm -hmm. on the news. What's up? Okay, the um, <clears throat> this work on the on the vaccine issue is moving very quickly. Uh, Stacy Pettigrew has a, a survey form done. It'll be discussed on Tuesday. And then also the folks at the library and at the uh, Center for Law and Justice uh, have already started thinking about messaging uh, and they're gonna come on Tuesday also. So the, get, the goal at this point is to get the survey out into the, into the world, uh, <laughs> probably next, probably the week after next, but um, <clears throat> get it out there and start to get results back. And, it, and it's basically, to, you know, get a feel for where people are and, and what, what their feelings are and who they would listen to. Right. Um, so that's going on now. Um, and um, we should see some real action on that pretty quickly. I, I, I ran a thing from uh, last Tuesday with Stacy and Carolyn and all of you all talking about it. In fact, the whole uh, new scene radio on Thursday was around the subject with, uh, it was the first time we've done a single subject 
in a while. And uh, it also included the governor's at first saying there's nothing coming in on the vaccine. And then by that afternoon, he was announcing the 170,000 vaccines. So um, we'll play, you know, whatever, whatever information you have on the survey, we'll get that out. So meanwhile, just work to uh, get people, people acclimated to the idea that this is something that's there for them. Hmm. Yeah, so, um, Shoot me a, a a paragraph on on your uh, your updates uh, and the times and all that, and I'll put that out before the meeting on Tuesday and keep putting that out also to to that group. Okay. Um. That that work? Yep. Yeah, that would work. Uh, okay. Just an update on where we're standing. Um, for some reason, we've got shows just popping in from all directions right now. It's um, uh, I'm working with interns from SUNY Albany, and I've got five young guys who have been doing the sports broadcast for them, um, and they're going to bring it over to WCAA. It's um, you know they're talking sports, so I don't understand what they're saying most of it, but. <laughs> It fills a niche. Um, you know, we're going to eventually, hopefully, um, a couple producers want to do something when it gets safer, going into barbershops and capturing people mm. talking about sports in the barbershop. So that it, it, we can infiltrate, just make it part of, reflect how it's part of our community, um, sports talk and all uh, we've got a, a couple new health shows. The, the nice thing that's happened this month is that we've got uh, a lot of uh, new women DJs, which uh, I had been wanting to move beyond. Um, you know, the radio and particularly hip hop and R and B tends to get. Uh, dominated by male voices and we're starting to break that down at this point. Hmm. Nice. Um, other things, uh, I'm working on um, putting together succession planning documents for the radio uh, that will also hopefully help Grand Street and its board, but with the, the radio, it's just um, everything we do will have a committee. Uh, every, instead of having one person in positions, we're going to have committees of at least three, where if somebody drops off, another mm -hmm. person gets put in there so that we keep everything filled and as jointly moving as possible for sustainability and the succession documents um, uh, will also have all the technical information that's necessary with what we do like what happens if uh, the stream goes down if uh, the broadcast goes down if something stops playing so all of that information will be um shared and i'm working with the people at pacifica on this so that it becomes something that uh, other stations in the pacifica network can also utilize as because uh they're realizing that our uh um work with doing things transparently and on a communal basis is sort of at the, the core of what community radio is. So, um, the underwriting, did, did you all get a check over to us yet, Tom and Kasim? Excuse me? Uh, I did. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I hadn't heard on that. Yeah, we're moving forward. Well, I'll double that. check it, but I'm pretty sure I did. <laughs> okay, well, we'll, we'll double check. Um, yeah, we're getting more interest from uh, underwriting. If any of you have other organizations that you think 
you should be reaching out to pass the information on to me. Uh, you know, I, I could use all the help I can at this point as we move in that direction. We're also at the after the holidays, we're going to do our um, annual kind of membership upgrade where all our producers and volunteers, we ask everybody to chip in, which helps cover our costs of uh, especially music rights, uh, internet rights, all that sort of stuff that's just the nuts and bolts of radio. So you'll be getting something on that soon. Um, the other thing that I'll have by next weekend is um, little flyers like what I had uh, around the pledge drive that will have a, 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 our schedule on one side where you'll need a magnifying glass to read it. Um, and then the basic information on the station on the other. And we're uh, planning to get those distributed with um, food baskets and other gift nice. baskets around the city. And uh, nice. Fawn's helping with that. And any, anywhere nice. you know that can help in that, hmm. great to know. All right. Uh, so, so Paul, it looks like with the Innovation Blocks Ambassadors, we will be doing another mass lit drop uh, before the end of the year. Okay. Um, that's about a thousand, thousand people, a thousand households dropped in their mailbox or whatever. Hmm. Um, I can't afford at this point to do the printing, but I can get them distributed. Um, how are you doing the printing then? Um, well, we'll do our own print. This will be mostly about the uh, uh, the survey for the for the vaccine and, and, and things like that. Maybe a couple of other items. I have a printer, uh, but um, <laughs> paper I'm kind of yeah. yeah. I mean, if if you want to pay us to print it, we could do that. Here's the, here's the thing. Let me talk to the NAA the NAACP had funds for printing of the news scene and but those funds are still tied up with a specific printer so let me find out maybe what we can do is uh quickly adapt this and call it like an update on news scene so that we can access that printing funds and i could just add in some information on the news scene being on radio at this point um so that that cost gets picked up. All right, we have a good we have a good high speed printer, so we can do that. It's just that <laughs> it's a little pricey. Oh, I know that. That's why if you know somehow the the funding that they that NAACP had gotten mm. was deposited directly into the accounts of this one printer, so it's no. locked in there. No. But, let me find out the specifics on that. Well, who's the printer? Um, it's in a scrap of paper in the bag down here. Or something. <laughs> it's, it's like three initials. Um, I'll get back to you on that and find out exactly. All right. I mean, it, it may be easier just to do it through them rather than mess That's with what the I'm money. Thinking. Yeah. Is that, yeah. I mean, do you create like a PDF file and work from that or? When I'm printing? Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes I just print from a Word document. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. Let's get in touch on that, and we'll we'll get that worked out. Okay. Um, when were you hoping to go to to press on that? I have no idea. <laughs> okay. okay. It's it's in flux. Okay. Um. Anything you're uh, noticing, like listening to the station, or are you hearing anything about it at this point on the street? Not, not yet. I mean, that's the challenge. Yeah. Um, 
part of the thing, like with with the, our producers, I'm getting all our producers to be listening to each other and making suggestions. So that's our producers' meetings are getting very productive in that way. Is that everybody's kind of becoming a, an ongoing team? Um, you know, the the more everybody on the advisory boards and you know, uh, you know, the great thing is that. Uh, with the archive, and I'll send that out again. If you go into the archive, you can just li listen to snippets of things running at different hours and the like, and it gives you a, uh, a more full picture or, or oral sense of what we're, what's happening. You know, the, um, it's so difficult reaching out to people. It, I mean, everything is so uh, splintered since the days when we could print a newspaper, put it out there and be assured that everyone would somehow know what was in it. Tell me about um, it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's the story of our life. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, anything coming uh, uh, in terms of events and stuff that we should know about to put into our daily events, hourly events calendar? Well, Swain will feed you what he's got. And it, and it does occur to me that we should have some of this information down there at 347 South Pearl, uh, even though we're not going to get a lot of traffic right away. But uh, it's possible that some of the people who come in for, se for sessions and so on would pick it up and pass it on as well. So I leave that up to Swain to figure out what he wants to do. But uh, in terms of a village, that's that's the the next and really the only thing we've got going on right now. Swain, any anything on the uh, like calendar coming up? Uh, I wouldn't say on the event side, not yet. But we are working with Sienna to develop a podcast that we're going to put uh, onto WCAA. Okay. So um, the uh, Siena Nonprofit Excellence and Transformation, the next program, um, they want to take some of the students and uh, of the fellows and have them interview uh, each other and like investors, community stakeholders, um, people who are starting businesses, uh, established business owners, um, and then people who are essentially trying to support the growth of black businesses in the South End. Okay, I'd gotten a little bit from, I forget the woman, yeah, I had been in touch with her last summer and we had done things around uh, the night market. Yep. Do you know um, when you would, would that only start up once they're in session? We've been in session. So we are, uh, the 12th, we're going to have them record like elevator pitches and start uh, doing some content specifically for the podcast. And then I believe... Um, they want to start sending stuff to you, Deirdre. Deirdre's going to follow up with you um, to start getting the content because she's going to produce all of the content and then the fellows are recorded. Okay. Um, if you want to move towards doing a specific show, I, I'll, I'll reach out to you and, and the people from Siena who were in touch with me to kind of get that specified because if it's a you know, if I'm fitting into new scene, I got to balance it with the rest of the city, but it'd be nice to move that towards a specific show. Um, you know, we've got a monthly slot, but a weekly like half hour slot, I think could be quite doable. Um, but what I, I would want to do is to try to ensure that it's, you know, <coughs> The difference between doing a podcast and for radio is that the time has to be very specific for radio. If it's, it can't be 10 minutes one week and 40 minutes the next. It's got to fit into a half hour or hour long slot. Yep. Um, and I have to know it's going to uh, be repeating itself. And then I also have to know it's not, I'm not going to have to edit it all together. Um, but I can help whoever's working with that and, it, and people pick it up very quickly, so. Okay. That's, that's a bit of a challenge for the Sienna folks 
uh, I'm not sure that they're that we're ready for a <clears throat> specific time slot, but um, and this is like a 15 minute time slot. Nah, uh, in, the, uh, in the notes we have Deirdre, Deirdre's proposing 20 to 30 minute segment. So Deirdre's okay. ready. She's ready to take this on. Um, yeah, we that's we just had a conversation about with, it this so. weekend. Then I'll continue to be in touch with Deirdre and work it um, work it out because it's a uh, uh, once you once you hook into the specific time slot, it's possible to fill it out with music, with other things, with uh, especially with the amount of Zoom stuff going on around. There's you can pull out stuff from from other meetings and comment on it. Or uh, I'll get in touch with her on how to mm. kind of start shaping that um hmm. you know and then w once uh, you know it's a similar with print that once you have what you need to do set and you have a deadline that deadline then pulls it together each week somehow yeah so that's good <clears throat> i'm looking forward to doing this hmm that's i'm looking forward to doing this i know it, it's gonna be it, it's really Here's where the problem we're dealing with on the station, and you all can start thinking in terms of uh, we're reaching like our next level of maturity where the people who were there early on doing, uh, you know, we had a lot of DJs just taking up turf in running their music shows like three nights a week, four nights a week. And the hard part now is to get them to give up some to make room for others and that's that's the battle i'm facing internally at this point but um and i'm trying to move some of them into the midnight hours uh but we'll get there but that that's where the more discussion of this sort of thing on in uh the advisory board context will allow that to move forward Yep. Yes. Um, how's my sound? You mean right there? Yeah. It's a lot better than before. It's still it's still yeah. a little loud, but not not as loud. Maybe I'll back up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, there's something big that's going on that I think should be part of the new scene. Uh, it affects the poorest people in the city of Albany. Uh, Ida Yarborough, the two high rises in North Albany homes, uh, they're asking the residents to move uh, ah. because they're going to redo these buildings. Uh, they're going to redo Ida Yarborough two floors at a time. And uh, this is in the middle of a pandemic. Okay, uh, they're being not really specific with us just yet. Uh, they have hired a person to be a moving assistant, but um, my understanding is the state has given Housing Authority $4 million uh, for this rehabilitation and uh, moving of people. Uh, it's very nerve-wracking for most of us. I, I don't know if there, you know, could be a reporter on this. I've already gotten in trouble with Chiquita Diarbo for supposedly some misinformation about the property they had for sale. They don't always get back to me. Now, Tamora, I uh, know, next next week they're having a board meeting and I sit in on the board meetings and you know listen to what they're doing uh, they have a lot of power in this town and right now uh, we're very stressed I'm very stressed I'm one of the people that's going to be affected with this and I'm downsizing my house I got 18 years worth of stuff in my apartment I have to get rid of a lot of it you know i don't know where i'm supposed to stay i don't know where i'm supposed to 
put my stuff. They're telling me in a pod in my driveway, but the people at Ida Yarborough don't have that privilege. Yeah. Uh, Here's what um, this new reporter that I'm working with, uh, Rachel Wilson, I'll throw her on that. Do you have, um, if, if I'd like to see, you have a copy of the paperwork that they sent to you? I might have some of it somewhere, yes. Uh, actually, on their site, on the Albany Housing Authority site, okay. uh, I'll try to send you that link. There is a, a summary of what is going on. Uh, Do you know what, what day is there? Is there a board meeting open? It's usually the second uh, Tuesday of the month, and I think the public can speak. Uh, the, for the first five minutes, it's a go-to meeting. Uh, I could it's send. A, it's a public meeting, or is it on Zoom? Uh, it's 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 on a thing called go-to meeting. Okay. Not Zoom, uh, and the public can attend. Um, I'll I'll you know I'll I'll be in trouble with them, but I don't care. That's my middle name is Trouble. So. You know, <laughs> no, this, this, is, this is really big. This may be the the big story besides vaccine, because it's also um, it's tying in at the same time. Lincoln, you know, the Lincoln Towers are dealing with this, and you've got the uh, yeah. the end of the eviction moratorium uh, coming into view right at the same time. So this could auger a, a massive problem for the city and it just uh so I'll, yeah. say, I'll work with you and and get a couple other people and uh we have a great kind of talk show host lane vaughn who can bring it up in a way that can be heard by you know people in the community and we'll uh start to pull this forth thank you thank you and I just also wanted to mention, last night I listened to a show. It's the first Friday of every month from the New Lebanon Town Library. My friend Linda Worcester is a wonderful singer, and she has a show. The, I don't know if we could get her and put her on, you know, once a month. She's fabulous. Uh, she would be a great show. Okay. Uh, if you know her music, she's really, really great, and uh, I enjoyed I'll it. I'll up and try to find a way to, to work that, you know, see what I can do with that. It's a, it's a Zoom concert. It's really great. Okay. Yeah, that's in our library system, so I can find find that. Okay. Paul, do you, do you have <clears throat> people working on the uh, the issue of evictions at this point? Just mentioning it. I mean, a lot of what, uh, you know, the idea of having people working on things usually means. <laughs> <laughs> a little a little bit. Uh, yeah, that bit means uh, I, I've got uh, it on little scraps of paper and I'm trying try to track <laughs> it down. Um, uh, I, but we have uh, there's a group called Housing for All that, that just started up again. Um, that is uh, mostly concerned with uh, pushing the city to develop more affordable housing. Yeah. Uh, but they're also uh, Regina, you're on that group, right? Um, Not that I'm aware of. It needs more publicity. Um, but uh, but also they're very closely connected with United Tenants, who are the people who are really handling all of the eviction issues. Uh, it's too bad you can't do a call-in show yet, because this would be perfect for that. There is so much misinformation about eviction going around. Uh, are you going then, to bring that into one of your South End meetings anytime soon? When I have a chance. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I should. What I'm um, finding is that my best method is is that the the news scene broadcasts 
are being downloaded like like 40 times each time it runs. So that mm -hmm. means that people in the city, I mean, in I think largely in city government and the other publications are starting to download us realizing that they're, you know, we're, we're covering three or four meetings on, on a, in a single broadcast. Uh, mm -hmm. But that's our best means at this point. Um, but I'll get, you know, I'm setting up a mechanism where I'll share kind of news information amongst those people who can then start to follow it individually. It's not, it's much less coordinated than a, a, a newsroom. All right, so you're assigning this back to me. Um, I, I think that, you know, what Regina brings up is very real and it is happening. It's ha been happening at Tree Lincoln for uh, months now, probably close to a year. People are being moved out whenever they can find a place for them to go. Um, because in that case, they're worried that the elevators will stop working and people will be stranded. Uh, so three Lincoln and one Lincoln are also being totally emptied out over a period of time. And that's probably been pretty slow. Um, but then you have the whole issue of, of what evictions are proceeding and there are some now, uh, and which ones are not, um, and also utility bills. Um, so, uh, you know, how, peop how do people, you know, uh, <laughs> stop from getting their, their heat shut off or their electricity or even worse, their cable? Um, it, it's, it's getting complicated by the fact that, um, like, National Grid tries to get people to, to fax their information. There's nowhere for them to fax when the libraries are going closing back up again. So, um, by the, the way, we're, even exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're down to about two minutes left on this. Here's what I suggest on that, Tom, is just to maybe, um, I'll call you after this, but I would say- Yeah, let's you know, talk more about this. Yes, yeah, so send an invitation to, um, uh, I forget the woman's native name, at United Tenants, and also to Chiquita, kind of a, a, that introduces me, and I'll try to talk to them and maybe do a specific uh, uh new scene around that but then i'm also going to uh send out something to all my reporters who do commentary or producers who do commentary to get them all focusing on this issue and this includes like like the the hip-hop shows the 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 music shows where people talk in them and that's nice. where it could have nice. some effect all right well, let's talk more about this and figure out how to okay. bring it up Okay, we're, we're down to a, to a uh, minute and 25 seconds, which means we I all- I love your limitation there. I think that's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. Let's just be on a continuous Zoom meeting all the time. <laughs> You're my only Zoom today. Uh, and Kasim, uh, how, many, how many more Zooms do you have today? Uh, Me? None. <laughs> none. Just a website to build. Okay, yeah, just just a website to build. Um, I'll be in touch with you too about uh, uh, this whole uh, thing with the Black Wealth Weekend, and we'll get that organized too. Okay. Okay, uh, well, have a great rest of the day. It's nice <laughs> and gloomy. It's perfect for reading, huh? Perfect right. for getting work done. <laughs> yes. Oh, I want and, that. <laughs> and here is your Buddhist blessing. May all beings be well. May all beings be happy. Peace. 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 Uh, excellent. <laughs> Peace. Okay. Peace. Until next time. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.